I'll be playing as Japan while I talk about this because it's a democratic country. Okay, democracy is the best ideology in a game. It's not regarded as the best, but it is. Of the three main ideologies, it's the least popular, but back when I played this in 2019 when the game looked like this, it actually was considered the best. And then it got nerfed and other ideologies were buffed. And people said democracy sucks now. And I listened to them without even trying it out. And I made fascism. But then one day I decided, hey, let's try democracy again. Is it really that bad? Man, I was really missing out. I'll answer every critique I hear about playing democracy later in the video. I mean, when you look at the democracy's effect, it, sh it, it seems like it should be bad. Look at all this red, so little green. 75% justification time, 15% military upkeep, less manpower and less stability when declaring war. When you look at communism, it should be good. So much more manpower, less justification time, less military reinforcement costs, more base stability, more stability when declaring a war, less war exhaustion, gigantic factory out. And when you look at fascism, even less justification time, more manpower, a very good military upkeep, more stability, and more stability when declaring a war, and whatever that is. But both communism and fascism have negative impact on tax and unrest reduction. Why am I making 27,000? What? What's going on, guys? Military upkeep? Uh, yeah, that, let's fix that real quick. There we go. Just uh, a few policies and the world's a better place. But democracy has a 110% increase in tax. That's absolutely insane. Fast unrest reduction is very useful too, so you can start developing your new land as soon as possible. So before I respond to quote unquote weaknesses of democracy, like how people think democracies can handle big long wars, I will prove that tax income is the most important thing in the game. So let's do a simulation. I joined a late game server and I played as Iran which only had Iran, Iraq and Afghanistan I think. So with around 80 to 100 million population after maximizing tax income to technology level 5, almost maxing out factory output and resource output and almost fully developing all cities, let's see which ideology can best support a gigantic military. Anyway just to pick on this right, right after I switching to communism like 2 minutes later I randomly got rolling blackouts and then I got rampant corruption and then substandard weapons because why not at this point I haven't even done anything yet and all I did was sell electronics and that's it as far as I remember this never happened to me as a democracy so anyway after those modifiers went away I spawned 7.6k tanks, 3.5k artillery, 2 million troops, 6 ashores, 6 battleships, 2 aircraft carriers and 6 submarines so with that along with maximum government spending, communism with the public service act was making 9 million even with 7 million worth of electronics being sold. I tried to do more okay but the rest of the AI didn't accept and I don't have like all day to trade one electronic to randomize islands like Fiji. 9 million really? That's absolutely terrible. Fascism with the military service act was making 42.3 million, that's way better. Well, better than communism because that's still dog shit. Because democracy was an amazing policies like tax reform and the Military Service Act, Improved Infrastructure, and the Prosperity Act was making 96 million. When I fully developed all the cities, that number became 168 million. Notice how we're spending way more money with democracy than fascism. But it doesn't matter because democracy makes way more money. And making the most money is the most important thing in this game. You might say, oh, what about the uh, less manpower? But hey, first of all, develop all cities, okay? And build recruitment centers and change the conscription. And second of all, what are you gonna do with all that manpower if you can't even afford the troops to use them in the first place? Even if you could top a democracy by selling hundreds of electronics to the communist country, which you can't, but even if you could, You'd be so heavily dependent on other countries, if they collapse or cancel trade, well there goes all your money. The beauty about democracy is you're completely self-sustaining. All the money comes from within your country, and it's way more money than every other ideology can even begin to dream. What about quote-unquote democracy is bad for expanding because of ju justification time? Yeah, it is bad for expanding this, which is why it's only good in the late game when you don't need to expand as much anymore. Like of course, now I'm still expanding and having no trouble. But if you're literally in a race with someone to grab countries as fast as possible, then yeah, you probably should go for like nationalism or something. But in the late game, you absolutely should go for democracy no matter what. And what about the three stability loss when you declare war? If you have consumer goods and have to have high government spending, which you will easily afford, I guarantee you won't even feel it. And from experience, it hasn't affected me. Never in the late game. Look, I'll, I'll make a civilian factor right now, and stability is like... It's gonna be a thing of the past pretty much. 
Oh, why are why did you guys fail? You failed. Oh, okay, steal and uh, okay. Let's see what happened. What? Oh, iron. Yeah, I f forgot about forgot about iron. Okay. There we go. Now you should work. Most people think that democracy is best for peaceful countries, but no. Not even a little bit, okay? The best ideology for peaceful countries is non-aligned, if anything, if you get the Neutrality Act. Better tax income and really good base stability and the 100% resistance. What about this ideology screams peaceful, dude? Look at the tax income, you can make a gigantic military. But the thing about the Neutrality Act for the non-aligned is the resistance, okay? Yeah, that's what you want to do if you want to be peaceful. I guess one civil factor wasn't enough, huh? Yeah, the whole Tokyo situation. Uh, I don't even think two is gonna be enough, to be honest. Uh, it might, though. Okay, this one. Oh, I'm still not making good... S Dude! Can you... Can you, like, happen? Oh, I can still make another one. Okay. Well, after this, I'm gonna be making good... S I'm gonna... I wanna kill someone at the end of this game. Someone who's preferably not democracy. Preferably communist or fascist. Just to show, okay. I can't guarantee that it's gonna happen. Oh anyway, yeah, democracy is is definitely not the ideology for peaceful countries. You can be an unstoppable war machine with democracy. I'm not saying you should bombastically attack anyone and everyone the second you notice their existence, but you do have the potential to have a top tier military if needed. And now for the most common critique I hear. Quote unquote, democracies can handle big wars because war exhaustion drains all their attacks, which then drains their entire income. I'm genuinely surprised how often I've seen someone say that. If you go into a war exhaustion and then collapse and then go in depth every time you play democracy, that's a you problem, not a democracy problem. Let me show you real actual examples of why this is false. Let's first look at an older war of mine. This is what the map looked like. Me and Nile Empire as democracies versus all of the Americas which are using communism. And ironically enough, in this war I didn't give a shit about losses. I lost so many troops in such stupid ways and I never entered high war exhaustion. First I invaded Australia for one of the worst landing positions. There's like no one even living here, barely any cities, and I did it anyway. Then to invade North America, I didn't land in Washington. Well, it was actually Mexico who was controlling it, so not that it would matter anyway, but out of all places to land, I landed in Alaska. And you know how I brought my 17k plus tanks there? I moved them through independent Russia where they took attrition and then they walked in the Arctic and most of them starved to death, and then they landed at the land that's furthest away from a city. Good. So then I waited for them to reinforce, and this invasion sucked more than 17k tanks died in like 6 months. So then I did the same thing again, this time I brought 37k tanks and 4 million troops, and they walked through that dreadful disastrous terrain where they all starved to death, probably, and recovered in Alaska. And then I auto-captured the west coast of North America, a much less densely populated area than the east. And just to point this out, right? The reason this invasion even worked is because of super artillery. For all you newcomers to this game, super artillery was a strategy to spawn a gigantic army of artillery and completely split them into several divisions, which did impeccable damage. I actually laughed so hard when I looked at the footage, like, it was so unbelievably OP. The enemy infantry were approaching like, What's up guys, are you ready to have a fun little battle? And then they all got fucking vaporized. Earlier in the war, when he tried to invade me, he brought this huge army, and again, right when the infantry got in range of the artillery, there was no going back. There was no way to counter it. If you brought an aircraft here with ships protecting it, well, I would just make the artillery swim to them. The artillery would make the destroyers vanish into thin air, and whatever was left would get sunk by my submarines. I'm rank 2? What? Oh, I'm rank 3. Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna be rank 3 anymore, I'm gonna be rank 2 now. Maybe even rank 1 after I do this. And the infantry divisions would get demolished so hard that the artillery could just lightly touch the troops, and since they're so weak now, they disappear. And then the artillery got nerfed. You can't split them like that anymore. They can't do damage while moving or swimming. Good times. So after starving millions of infantry in Australian deserts and freezing tens of thousands of tanks in the Russian Arctic, and invading a whole continent which I then scorched and lost like 90% of my 37,000 tanks, 4 million troops, army, and my, and my war exhaustion was pretty much non-existent the whole time. 
I actually have a video about this war and you can watch the whole thing if you want. So I was the only one in the whole world that didn't collapse. Me as a democracy didn't feel a thing for my stability and my work session, obviously. Well, I'm ranked 2 now. As I said, I will be ranked 2. Oh, I'm making 26 million now. I haven't even gone to my f full form yet. F final form is what I meant, of course. Yeah, and just to summarize the next example really quickly, in my latest Resident Evil video where I did a Clover Infantry lane chance, not only did I never in a whole video going to work session as a democracy using Clovers, I invaded Mario Empire in the US at the same time using Clover Infantry, who can barely even invade cities if their life depended on it. And war exhaustion and stability was a last thing on my mind. I didn't even think of it and it didn't matter. If you can invade two gigantic countries with mass attack at the same time and not even think about war exhaustion, then it's irrelevant. Communism is awful, fascism is okay, but I don't know what the point of it is in a late game and democracy is superior. Democracy was superior in the early stages of the game, it still is and always will be. If you're still not convinced, I'm glad. I want as little democracy players as possible. Because to be honest, seeing my opponent use communism or fascism is a relief. If they're a democracy, that's a threat. Now let's, you know, focus on trying to kill someone who's not democracy. Uh, oh, you're democracy. Oh, you're the US. Okay. Well. Uh, you're... What? what? Okay, I kind of want to form the Empire of Japan, but China has Taiwan and North Korea. And that's why I'm gonna kill him right now. And he's an AI. So that should be really easy. Okay, Empire of Japan. Okay, I completely locked myself with some rains, so now I'm uninvadable. Unless they bring destroyers, of course. The only options I have to kill are democracies. Oh, uh, there's the opportunity. Let's kill Canada! Oh, but it's a liberation war, so this is gonna be completely useless. You can't take a war with USA and Canada. Yeah, I can. <laughs> Bro, I mean, you guys are democracies. So this kinda uh, is kinda pointless, but I'll do it anyway. I'm gonna make a gigantic navy, buddy. Remember? For a harbor? They have 300 ships. Oh, they have 300 destroyers? Uh... <laughs> what? Okay, I guess I know what I gotta do. Oh, he brought all of them right here. Oh, shit. Bruh. Yeah, that kind of killed everything. What even remained? Oh, that's a frigate. Dude. Really? 16 frigates? Okay, so this is what I want to do. These are going to be main, my main invasion army. And these are going to be my distraction army. Yeah, my navy got fucking obliterated. We need to increase our destroyer attack. And battleship attack. Dude, uh, should I just, you know, not care about... You know what, I'm not gonna- I'm not even gonna care about oil, okay? I'm gonna make a fucking gigantic navy right now. Oh, that's all I did. You gonna- What are you gonna roll out, freak? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I make a gigantic army of battleships. So now I have 200 ships. We still don't have more ships. Okay, so hopefully with this absolutely massive army of destroyers that I just made, it's gonna be enough. Okay, I got 28 battleships. That should be plenty. So this is what's gonna happen. These guys are gonna go to auto capture, which is gonna distract the US to try to kill them. Uh, and the rest, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make them all land in one spot. So they're gonna, these guys are gonna get divided up. Oh, they finally learned that they have to make battleships. Okay, time to, time to send them out. United States, go, distract them. No aircraft carrier, go back. Oh, too late. Quite pitiful. Okay, that's most of the navy gone. Let's see, or how how much did you split them up? Let's actually make you go all go into this place. Oh, 
Oh, and the U.S. left. Well, then, not like I didn't expect that or anything. And this is a liberation war, so, you know, none of this even matters for me, anyway. See, I lost 4 million troops, and my war exhaustion is 7. 0 0.7. Which pretty much means nothing, is what they mean. Democracy forever. For now, peace.